finish the salmon, make sure the scales are removed. Super sharp knife, let the knife do the work. First off, knife, look at the gills. Lift up the gills, slice, feel the bone halfway through and come down throughout. Turn the salmon around, tilt it. Once you tilt it, OK, it'll help the knife to cut through the salmon. Use your hand, use the tip of the knife. Hear that noise? That's the rib cage. Come down all the way through. Clean the knife every time. Lift up the salmon, slice through, keeping the knife nice and flat. If it's not flat, you're going to cut a huge hole in that salmon. Now, check what you're doing. Place the salmon back down. Let the knife come down. Flip through. Clean knife every time. A little sharp one. Hold the head nice and firm. Knife down, in, and through. Be very careful here not to go too deep. I'm using the tip of the knife and literally just coming in and across that bone. See? Follow that bone down. If the knife gets dirty, pull it out, clean it, come back up, hold the salmon nice and firm. Now, let the knife do the work, OK? Through and off. Now, from there, slice that off, take that off, lay that back down, and come through there. I want to see a nice, clean carcass like that. I don't want to see any salmon left on there. Trim round the salmon. And this is where you take these first fine bones out. Don't go too deep. Keeping that belly on there, that's where that flavour is. Again, clean board, clean knife. You've got clean slices. Use the sharp knife. Come through. Slice down through the dorsal fin and remove that off. You can see there's a bit of bone left on there. Come back up. In and off. There. Remove the fin very carefully. And every time you do this, you're taking off minimal cuts of salmon for obvious reasons. Turn that over and then think about the portions. One, two, three, four, five. So we trim the tail there. One, two, on, three, four, on, and this bit here. Just tidy that up a little bit. Five, on, second side. Clean the board down. Same procedure again. Big knife, round, thin, come off. Nowhere near as many bones this time round. Turn it round. Look at the cut. Mirror what you've just done there. And there we have two, four, six, eight, ten portions of salmon filleted. Lines with precision and finesse. Ten portions out of your salmon. Understood? Sure. Yep. Right, lobster. First off, off with the claws. Now, from there, tail lift open and twist. OK? Now, open up that tail. Press it in between your hand, palm of hand, in, and squeeze the top part of that tail. Literally, squeeze. Once it's squeezed, Hold it open and twist. And literally, do not burst the lobster. And then when you get down to the third one, thumb on here, push in and gently, literally pull out the tail. From there, claws. Separate the knuckle, pull the first claw, twist and pull. Turn out, get rid of that water. Again, separate. The knuckle, twist, drain out, and pull. From there, big knife, hold up the claw, in, twist, burst, off. Little finger in, and off of the claw. Knuckles, off, 
there, through here, slice, one half, down, push, from there, open up, beautiful. Okay, one knuckle out. Take this off. These little beauties have a touch of meat. I'll show you where these bits here, top. Try and slice at an angle. Rolling pin at the back, push, and out comes the leg. These are tiny little legs, but the meat inside is so sweet. It's extraordinary. Again, slice at an angle. Open up the knuckle, down, in, and squeeze. From there, take the head, cut tentacles off. There's a V here. Go round, present your lobster. Take out that. Now, that's just a touch of the carcass, but let me show you why. Remove that. Keep that nice and upright. There's our tail. There's our claw inside before the claw is each knuckle. Second knuckle. Then you've got one leg. That is how to extract your meat from your lobster. <laughs> Port loin on the bone. The secret is now is to take that beautiful eye of meat off the bone and cut eight incredible steaks. First off, it's a T-shaped bone there. It's going through. There's the blade, there's the base. That there creates the most amazing crackling. Make sure you stabilise. Again, boning knife. Super sharp, really important. We're gonna slice through there, come down off the back, slice through, and start to open up. Cutting in, there's a little ridge there. Come over the ridge, careful not to slice through that eye. Fingers here, it's pulling back. Once I start pulling back and I feel the lift of the loin of pork, come back down, in, towards the bone. Turn the knife up into the eye of the meat, you're going to destroy it. Firmly hold and slice down. As you slice, peel back. I want to see those ribs nice and clean. Once we get there, this is a bendy, flexible knife, and it's done purposely for slicing. Follow the shape. Pull back, look at where I am, check what you're doing. Stay accurate, stay close to the bone. Off. Now. Loin, bone. From there, you can see the eye, the skin. We turn it over, flat side down, we come into the fat, and we just pierce in there. And then thumb inside, nick that little bit of fat through, and literally pull off. Now, look at the eye. Remove the eye. That is the beautiful nut of meat. That gets crispy. There's your crackling. From there, this silver skin of fat. I don't want to go through the eye of the meat, but I want to trim this up. Pork is very lean, so we have to leave a little cap of fat on there. Trim, and then size up. We want four amazing cuts. Big knife for the weight, so it's four, so lightly mark there, there, and there. Pushing with this hand to keep that last slice super straight. Roll it up, let the knife do the work, slice down, off. One beautiful loin of pork. Grip, use five fingers, grip, stop the wobbling. On, hand on top, let the knife do the work. Two. Final. Size it up. Let the knife do the work. 
Open up the fingers there. Come down, straight, open. And four. One, two, three, four. Stunning. Loin. Chops. Off the bone. The great sear. And literally six, seven minutes, uh, three minutes on each side. Let it rest. You've got pork at its best. Right, the most important thing when cutting peppers, secure the pepper, OK? Make sure it's nice and stable. So first off, thinly top and tail. Stand it up right. Clean the board every time. And then hold it upright. Slice round. Try not to go too deep into the seeds, OK? Otherwise, we get that white part of the pepper off. And that's what turns it bitter. So keep the seeds intact. Now. From there, straighten up your pepper. Use the board. Let the knife do the work. One finger in front, two behind. This knuckle protects the nail. And slice nice and fine. Let the knife do the work. Use the butt of the knife and slice those peppers nice and thinly. This is how you julienne the red pepper. Always cut the pepper skin side down. Skin side up really difficult. Make sure those strokes are nice and thin. Thin peppers like this, great for stir fries, great for salads. From there, clear down. Next, yellow pepper. Should be a fine dice. Similar way, top and tail again. Literally secure the pepper upright. Clean down. Follow the pepper coming round. Don't go too far into the centre. Keep it nice and straight. Let the knife do the work, keep the seeds intact. From there, similar to the julienne, cut in matchsticks all the way to the end. Don't worry about the speed, be more precise. Clean the knife, turn it round, uniform them, use your knife to uniform, and then look up. Nice and steady on the handle. Forget the speed, that will come. Keep them nice and tight, like matchsticks. We've got that nice, fine dice all the way across. Lift up, onto your board. Green peppers. This one's going to be a baton, a bit thicker. Great for stir fries again, and great for salads, and great for sauces. Clean the board, secure the pepper, work around. Try not to take off any of that white stuff inside. So look, I've got white on my pepper there. Hold it flat side down, take the knife, skin it off. Leave that on, you've got this bitter, Aftertaste on the pepper. From there, square them up. Keep the knife nice and clean. This time, we go a bit thicker. So flatten the pepper down. And now we cut the most amazing baton. So we've gone from a fine julienne to a beautiful baton. Straighten the pepper out. Take off the little ends. Nice, thick slices. And there we have a beautiful baton. Three peppers, three ways. Red pepper, julienne, yellow pepper, beautifully diced. And this is how you batten the green pepper. Forget the rush, the speed, all about precision. So, first big challenge, chopping two herbs, very fine. Let's start off with the chives. Secret here, keep that board clean. Stack the chives. These little tail ends, discard, OK? How many times have you seen chefs chop super fine and the board's green? All the flavour's lost on the board. We want the flavour kept in the herb. So, bunch up. Three-finger rule. One in front, two behind. This knuckle protects. Please be careful. One in front, let the knife do the work. Let's use the base of the knife and then literally just pinch nice and fine. They're called rundles because it's the shape of a round cylinder. Now, Stop. I clutch over the chives and I'm not pressurizing or bruising the chives. So, as we get the maximum flavor in the dish with the chives, and I want the goodness of the chives in the dish, not on the board. And look, no green on my board. Super fine chives. Come on to the basil. Open up the leaf, tip to tip. About 10, 12 leaves maximum, otherwise it starts to bruise. Open up those leaves. Gently roll them, almost like a cigar. Don't bruise the leaf.
clean knife, hold, finger, thumb, three finger rule in front. And again, let the knife do the work. As you can see, the basil is not bruised. It's sliced super fine. In the culinary world, this is called a chiffonade. And it stays a beautiful color. If I had to push my fingers down, and look what happens. The goodness comes out. And there we have the most amazing chiffonade. Just smell that. Mm. The fragrance inside there is incredible. And look, nothing on my board. Clean, super fine chopped chives and a super finely chopped basil. Both herbs chopped without bruising. There's a big difference. Understood?